When you look at really big games that do social media marketing very well, what are they doing exactly? What is working for them? And how can you extract some of those gems from what those big games are doing, even if you don't have a very, very big game, right? Maybe your game is growing. As a game developer, how can you make sure to approach social media marketing in a strategic way so that you're not wasting a lot of time and energy? Well, I recently talked with Sandy Smith. She is the social media content manager at Yoda One Games. Very insightful. We talked a bit about some of those big games and some of the lessons that we can extract from those examples, as well as how we can put those into practice. So I hope you enjoy the conversation. Let's talk about longevity. Maybe we can get into sp some specific examples. One of the games we published, Rodeo Stampede, that game has been going strong for what, seven years? Uh, yes, the sixth yeah. birthday was in June, so it's like six and a half. It's going on seven, right? Yeah. So, so, and maybe we can get into some other examples. Let's try to tie it all together to talk about how executing on a really good social media marketing plan, let's say including community, including KOL marketing, can right. lead to that longevity that we obviously want to have a player base that's consistent, stable, always there, right? Right. So obviously there's a lot of things that go into keeping your community alive. Like you can't do all this social media work and not have updates and expect your community to still live on, obviously. Yeah, that's kind of a no-brainer. It's a full, right? yeah, full circle thing. Everybody has to be involved. So there's a lot of steps that you need to obviously take and all the ones that we've already mentioned. Um, but the outcome can be really awesome. Like with Rodeo Stampede, I get comments on like every single TikTok saying like, oh, I've been playing this game since it came out. So to have those players still playing your game, like, first of all, it feels good. Like it's nice to know that they stuck it's around. It's a warm right? and fuzzy feeling. Yeah, absolutely. right. Um, it's also not an accident, which is important right. to recognize. Right. Nothing and is an accident. Clash of Clans, <laughs> Rodeo Stampede, Right. Pokemon Go, they've achieved that for a reason with specific right. activities, right? Pokemon Go is a super interesting um, example too because they are the kings of like um, keeping their game aligned because it was so popular when it first came out, right? And it it, it kind of died have this off. Perception that it died, but it, it's not that it died. It just it went it went crazy and then viral, it reached... right? And guess oh. what? Those people that we're still played after the peak are still playing because again constant new content whatever but also they really worked with their influencers they had people who were already making videos about the game but also what pokemon go did and this is different than a lot of other mobile games they would fly those influencers all around the world to catch all these different types of pokemon That's so cool. with doing that they would hold events in these places where anybody can go right mm. So, like, you can buy a ticket. Pokemon Go Fest, huge. Huge. People love that. So, not only are you creating content, also, I mean, you have to pay for the influencers, but they're making the content, not you. <laughs> you know, like, you don't have to do that. How do um, we, though, how do we distill that into the practical takeaways that, because that's not, having a giant fest and flying people right. around the world in business class is not doable if you're right. <laughs> a smaller game right a this is a, a yeah. big example right right um, right and with you know they obviously they kind of saw a decrease with COVID because they were not able to do things like that anymore right. um right. so then that's where things like Fortnite come in you can do an online event right like the concerts which again big example but you can maybe do it on a smaller scale um, like a Discord event or even an in-game event. I guess my suggestion is to try and find these influencers because you can also, you can find influencers who are already playing your game. You can find a smaller KOL and work with them. You might have to help them grow. You might have to push, you know, some of your viewers to their viewers. But um, once you establish that relationship and get a solid KOL who will work with you, a lot of the times you don't even have to pay them. And maybe right. you're giving them, what, early access to things, special things? Early access. Um, with ARBs, we give them the in-game content for free. So, like, um, 
Got we it. give them lots of gold, skins, new skins, things like that. Um, we give them early access. We give them information, new information that's upcoming so they can kind of tease it. And mm. um, yeah, things like that. That's cool. That's cool. So it kind of ties into uh, especially the community aspect of events happening and having influencers constantly talking about it, making content about it. Um, right. it, 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 it ties it together. Um, really right. well. Those are those are interesting examples. Um, but again, also you want to consider the scale, right? So right. you would say working with a reliable, stable influencer who may be growing, maybe better right. than just sort of finding one off influencers, paying them and hoping that it's going to work, right? I would consider them two different things, honestly. Okay. okay. So you have your paid influencers who don't usually play your game. They don't usually post your game. But then you have your influencers who are posting your game. Um, and a lot of times, like they're already posting, so you won't have to pay them. Like you might give them, you know, um, for example, ARBs, we're giving Steam keys, which you can then give, do as a giveaway. So it's more of kind of payment like that. So I would definitely consider them two separate entities. They can be used for different things. That's very interesting. Okay. Okay. But that's sort of building out the um the universe around your game right so yeah yeah looking at it like a constellation of things that are all interconnected working together to move this thing into the culture and allow right. that to have its sort of grab hold of it and have some momentum yeah. right exactly i think that brings us to help right because right. you know one of the things that i've been saying throughout is that as a hypothetical developer in this scenario, you're giving me all of this great advice and these tips, but it's it's giving me anxiety. Uh, it's a and, lot. Um, it's a lot to think about. Geez, I just want to make my game and release some fresh content once in a while. I don't want to have to think about this. Uh, at what point do I look for help? And then what kind of help should I look for? Well, okay, so the thing with social media is there are so many levels to help, right? So you could get help in terms of having a platform that you can schedule out and it'll post automatically for you, yeah. um, which is a great option if you're low budget, super new, just released your game. Um, if you you know have a little bit of a budget and you have a little bit of more of a... Um, just a monthly, a monthly fee, probably, but worth it right. for the convenience. Right. Are you talking you about can, s scheduling posts and managing comments, that sort of thing, right? Yes. Um, and you can also find people to make content. So making content is, as as you know, very time consuming. Filming, editing. Oh, it's editing. not for me. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. I mean, finding music that is right. copyright free in a lot of instances and um, what type of content knowing streaming versus TikToks versus um, static content like, um, you know, post for Facebook pictures. Um, you can find people to help you with just that. Um, you can find freelancers if that's what you're just looking for. You can find bigger companies um, like us. We have a very um, customizable social media package. So we can help with like a lot of different needs. And that's because social media has to it is so customizable right there's so many layers there's so much that can be done so many different platforms i like to say that we are a one-stop shop so we can really we can do it all um and we can even do a little bit right so something like yoda one we have a lot of tools at our disposal right yeah been doing so, it for over 10 years as well right we we have a little bit of information in our pocket um versus maybe a freelancer might only be good at doing one thing, right? And they might not have all the tools and they might not also have all the information. They might, you might find a great freelancer, but then typically those freelancers are a little bit pricey. If you are on a smaller budget, you know, really you need to look at what you want. If you like making content, but you don't like posting, there's different options for you. Our service is super customizable. There's a but lot they we wanted can to do. do KOL marketing plus they wanted someone to help them run a community in, including engagement and responding to stuff that would be on the table as well. 
Yes, for sure. So it's very bespoke, which is cool. Yes, right. We have to be almost in a sense because so many different platforms, so many different stages, trends are changing every day. There isn't one thing that works for everybody, like we've mentioned. So and you have to do different things. We have to be able to help you in different ways. You're also kind of accessing a strategic viewpoint because right. you have a publisher who's been you know, one, over 1.5 billion players and doing this stuff for 10 years, then taking some of those insights and applying it to what you need for social media. And right. that is right. a big part, right? Right. There's just so many different aspects and so many different opportunities and so many different right. challenges. Yeah, you just don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. You, and exactly. Staying on top of everything is, is pretty pretty daunting sometimes but as you said yeah, sure. you can be strategic you're, you know i don't think you're saying well okay so the only answer is to not do it yourself you're saying I mean, be strategic and know <laughs> right. what you can do make an evaluation right. based on your resources and what's working for your game okay facebook isn't working for you this type of posts this type of content's not working for you iterate right. until you find what is working and then Focus in on that and follow right. success, right? Obviously, continue doing that, but don't be afraid to try new things either. Right. Because yeah. again, yeah. always changing. Yeah, you got to have your feelers out there. Right. You got to I'm not test every day, you know, like still have your normal repetitive content, but also, you know, throw in, throw in a new style of video every now and then. See what happens. You never know. Might be your new golden egg. Uh -huh.